The studio with the New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap, Jefferson County Prosecutor Attorney Matt Harvey, and the mogul, Mike uh, Hornby. Thank you for having me. That's one hell of a shirt, John. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I thought I'd be, i brighten things up today. So you are definitely bright. <laughs> You were probably expecting a comment from me, and I never gave you one. Well, no, I, I, you have commented on far less vibrant shirts it's than It's kind of like Joseph's so. Technicolor raincoat, or yeah. what, what yeah. they call it. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. I figured you wore that shirt because you wanted a reaction, so I wasn't going to give in and give you one, but okay, that's now fine. you got like, one. Okay. The, the Northern Lights, sort yeah. of. It does look a little Northern. Zone. Grateful Dead. It's very colorful. Like but the Grateful you, Dead gave up. If you look at it long enough, the at, stripes start to move. At the, at the Christmas party, are you going to have a ugly sweater contest or no. shirt contest? No, no, there's a winner right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll be cold. This is not a cold winter yeah. shirt. Uh, Mike uh, Hornby sits on the Education Committee in the West Virginia House of Delegates, among other committees as well. And our topic today has been mostly education. So let's dive into it, too. First, Mike, because this is the first year now that there will be designated aides in the classroom. Berkeley yes. County has chosen grade one for yes. these aides. We just heard Damon Wright's reasoning from the BOE, and he said that we figure start off in first grade. Why wait till third grade till we have an issue? And I have no problem with that. I know when we drafted this legislation or, or, or when uh, Roger you know, pushed this, I was proud to sponsor it. Um, we were thinking third grade, uh, first, second, and third were the three. Obviously, we couldn't get funding for all of it, so uh, it ended up being, hey, let's give the local uh, boards of education the flexibility, mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll grow the program as we get more money. So is the plan next year to have aides in two of those and three grades? The plan is to, to – obviously, we have to, have to appropriate the funds. Mm -hmm. So the plan is, and I believe the plan is, to grow that program each and every year. And how much money did this first-year program cost, do you recall? I want to say it was about $40 million. Um, I think the whole thing was around $160 million, which was a, a large price tag with the, the, price, the tax cuts coming. So, mm -hmm. um, But it also – in order to implement all three at the same time, it's not like we could just magically create a whole bunch of aides and teachers. So I think this STEP program is a better way to go. That's another aspect of it, and that is finding the people to fill the positions. Yes, and we made it easier for aides to move up into uh, teaching roles and becoming teachers. So there was a lot of aspects that happened um, this last session that, that affect us. So I think it was a good good idea for the, the STEP program. As you, as you look from the Education Committee and oversee the entire education system in West Virginia. What were some of the greatest needs that stood out to you as to things that need corrected because well, of the scores, uh, test scores of kids? Well, in West especially the test scores. I mean, our test scores are abysmal. Um, and we keep pushing kids along and moving them up, even though their test scores are bad. Um, and I think one of the things we, we really addressed was that discipline bill, which was 2890, which allows the teachers to hold the kids back it really does it holds teachers accountable holds students accountable and it holds parents accountable so it's an outline of what the school systems need to do you know and you hate to write have to write legislation to do this but the way we're seeing it is you know i listened earlier to john calling kids monsters but w without discipline kids can be little monsters a a at a very young age um and if there's no accountability and if there's no forcing parents to come down, get involved, you know, it's not just, hey, we're going to send you to the, to the gym for a, a, a class period and then you can come back to the next class period and mess up that whole class because the, the, the very small few are messing it up for the, the larger um, majority that are wanting to learn. Are there teeth in this parental accountability thing? I and mean, if you tell me I need to, to come to the principal's office and talk about my kid and I say, no, I don't think I'm going to do that. Well, there's, there's teeth in the fact that the school can now actually remove that student, um, and that student would have to go find uh, another school, a private school or somewhere else, or they'll be held accountable to, to not sending their child to school. And is there, going back to the, the aides in first grade, is there a targeted metric for that? Is that to increase learning in general, or is it specifically it's in reading? It's specifically or? in reading and mathematics. Those are the two that, that are focused on. We, the studies show... By the time you get to third grade, if you're not at a proficient level in, in reading and math, you are almost impossible to, to graduate. And we're graduating kids out of high school that are not proficient in, in reading and math. So when a child gets to the end of his first grade year or her first grade year and cannot perform, they do first grade again? or the, is it The teacher has the ability to do that or provide an IEP. 
So they would have IEP. Go, individual education plan. So there are certain ex- circumstances, uh, dyslexia, learning disabilities, where kids genuinely need more help. Mm-hmm. Um, so we provide the teacher with the tools to say, this child is not ready. Um, it's a multi-tiered uh, approach to this, and they need to go to summer school. They need extra tutoring. They need a uh, IEP or, or something where they get more guidance, which brings the the parents, gets the parents involved, gets a much higher uh, level of learning so that we can get the kids to where they need to be. And is there a program for the super smart kids? There is. I, you know, I can speak to this because my son is actually in um, the gifted program at South Middle. Uh, he is in an IEP, so he's considered special needs, uh, but it's not special needs that he's being held back. He's doing college-level classes. He's got his own individual tutor uh, once or twice a week. He's doing things that I, he has math homework. I can't even tell you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't sure. understand it. Yeah, no, it's yeah. different. He's doing coding. He's doing things that uh, he is much more able to do. So, yeah. and I, want, they, they, so I, I give credit to Berkeley County Schools yes. on, on that side. I mean, you look at our, our Berkeley County Schools budget. I just pulled this up on the website right when you guys were talking. We're spending $42 million on special, special education just in Berkeley, Berkeley County every year. How much of that is federally reimbursed, Mike? Do you know? Well, uh, <laughs> that's the other thing, and I heard you guys talking about this discipline. I, you know, I think the administrators don't like to report the discipline because it is tied to, to funding. Uh, and, and I think this discipline bill that we ran really forces, gives the power to the teachers so that the, the administrators can't just say, well, we'll just hide that. Or, uh, But a lot of federal funding is, is tied in. You know, uh, I think we need to stop this chasing federal money all the time. Um, our budget in, in West Virginia is four point something billion dollars, but we're subsidized nine point something billion dollars in federal subsidies. So what do we have to do to chase those funds? Why is well, that I mean, and that's, you know, I, I heard, uh, I heard earlier, you know, I, I don't think we should be hiring all these administrators to be chasing after federal funds. It's, it's kind of, we're, we're chasing after our tail here. And, and then we're, we're servants to whatever the federal government, which creates more work for the teachers, which creates more work for the administrators. So we could creating jobs that are funding themselves, but, I don't necessarily think that's the way to go. I think it was on this station within the last couple of weeks, <clears throat> excuse me, there was somebody who was proposing consolidation of the school districts in the state of West Virginia, that we have too many individual administrative programs and we can combine, particularly with the smaller counties. There has been talk um, amongst um, the folks down in Charleston that it would work. I don't think it would get it passed initially because I do believe that we need a elected school board for each county so that your county is represented because we all look different the issue that we have is all these admin buildings um we don't necessarily need 55 different thousand copiers across the state so some of that stuff can be consolidated wasn't doesn't the the Reses do that or the reese's however you pronounce it uh reese or yeah I, they, they do they more regional they, they do a regional um but isn't that for purchasing and, and copiers and paper? Well, if you think about it, I mean, Jefferson County School Board, uh, and I'm not talking about the elected school board, but Jefferson County School Board and Berkeley County School Board, we're not that far away. We're not that different. Um, but we both had we do things a lot differently. So there has been talk, but I don't think it's, it's anything that's going to come soon or, or that would work in, in, in West Virginia anyway. I mean, you can make that argument for a lot of services. Well, a lot of government entities. attorneys, yeah. sheriffs. You sure can. You can you have district attorneys instead of you 55 sure prosecutors. Well, I'm going to get the numbers wrong, but there are, particularly in the, when you go into the belly of West Virginia, where the um, populations are much, much smaller, there are any two or three or four counties that together the school populations equal about what we have in Berkeley County. And yeah, I mean, we, there's schools in West Virginia that are elementary all the way through high school. I mean, that they have a couple of hundred kids. Um, there are smaller schools. There are smaller counties. Um, but I think you've got to have some local control at the same time and let them. Do and they're the they biggest think. employers in those counties. They definitely are. And, and I'm from one of those counties. And, and some of those smaller counties, um, being a teacher is a great job. It is. The, it, it's one of the. the you can have a wonderful the, life. Wonderful life with a great salary, great benefits. 
Um, but if you take take that same money here, it's not a wonderful life. And you know, I wish I would have asked Mr. Mr. Albert, like, why is it fair that people in other parts of the state get paid more, even though it's the same money right. on paper? And and that's not. the argument we're going to have till the end of time. Until but they we do can, it backwards. And, and we do. Well, critical vacancy pay is critical is in, vacancy pay is coming, right? For teachers, do you think? It, it's it's got I me. Mean, We've got to realize, and, and I think, uh, I think the legislature realizes that th this is a serious problem. And, and if we want to continue reaping the benefits of what Berkeley, Jefferson, and, and some of those growth counties are giving us, you're going to have to, you know, change the attitude that we have. So, do you have a feel? We've talked about uh, pretty much exclusively. <coughs> we talked about discipline issues during mm -hmm. the show, and now we're talking about the pay issues, which are mm -hmm. also significant. Do you have a feel if we waved a wet magic wand and we? paying teachers the equivalent of what you could get across the river would we end up with a flood of teachers no, or is i don't think so uh, you could you could say every teacher gets 100 grand right now that so i still think would would have a shortage of teachers i think it's the disrespect of uh people in a position of power i think it, it's parents um that are putting the blame on the teachers the teachers putting the blame on the parents the administration's just there to you know try and herd cats um, I think it needs to be a all of all of that approach. It needs to be we need to hold our kids accountable. We need to hold our parents accountable. Um, without discipline, I don't think we can get much anywhere. And if 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 the kids are not respecting the teachers, why would you want to do that? It's kind of like corrections. Why would you want to be a corrections but officer? Are, are these problems that government can fix? No. Or make worse. We can make we can try to fix it. Um, it's our job to try and fix it. That's why we have this legislation to 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 try and help. Um, but it's a societal thing. I mean, it, it, just like you said, John, you used to go and put your nose on the, on the wall and all the kids would laugh at you and you'd feel embarrassed and you, you wouldn't do that again. Um, if you did that now, you'd be fired and um, you, you were mean to little Johnny, you made him feel bad, and you didn't give him a trophy. I mean, that's the way, the way we've come. I, mean, I do it too. I, I think my kids do no wrong, but they can be little brats sometimes. I mentioned, I, th I think it was to Jackie last week when she was on, a, but I, maybe not. It seemed it, the problem is fundamentally simple to me, that if you have a superintendent who tells his principals, I'll support you in your decision. You're smart people. Unless you do something totally off the wall or illegal, I will support your decisions. And then you have higher principals who tell their teachers, look, it's your classroom. You keep order in your classroom. However, within the boundaries mm -hmm. of the law, yeah. you keep order in your classroom. And if, and if little... Tommy got an F, it'll be an F, irrespective no matter of, what. of when the, it's that simple. It is that simple, but when the parents come in and talk to the administrator and the administrator's sitting there going, man, if, 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 if I fail this kid, I'm going to get hammered on my budget. I, I'm, I can barely make it as it is. It, it's one of those things where you're just going round and round and round because the administrator is now sitting in front of the parent and he wasn't in the classroom, so now he's got to stick up for the parent. The kids say he did nothing wrong. Now the teacher feels slighted because they didn't get their way. So we're trying to make it easier, but at the same time, it seems like even with this discipline bill, it was kind of sent down to the counties. But now we're doing a study, and you know, you got Alonzo doing this. We made more more bureaucracy that we didn't intend to. We just try to make it easier for teachers. Let's talk about uh, education in the classroom, Mike, and some of the changes that were made that will make. Uh some of that uh, a little bit easier, and, and some of that included finding ways to lessen the uh, teacher load because we don't have as many kids graduated from college with education degrees that are taking jobs in teaching. We need to find alternative ways of leading classrooms. Yeah, so we, we made it easier for the, the aides right now to become teachers so that they could, you know, do some uh, dual, dual, dual credits. They could get to teaching because... You know, a lot of these aides are fantastic. They could, they could teach in a kindergarten classroom right now. Um, so some of those more specialized things, I think we made it easier for, we took away some of the um, the testing. So we let, we let uh, and that those are coming, we streamlined the testing. So it'll make it easier on, on the kids where they're not having to do three different, three different tests. We're not teaching to the test, we're just teaching the subject. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I think that streamline uh, would really help in the reporting because there's, there's, there's a lot of reporting that goes on. What is the future of the State Board of Education? Well, the amendment um, failed on the uh, on 
on the ballot, right? It was kind of Amendment Four. It was. Um, I still think there's an appetite in the legislature to gain some oversight over the state board of education, um, oversight over, you know, what they do, what what processes they have. They're um, they uh, they need to be held accountable. Speaking of oversight, what is the future of the SSAC? Well, I think it, I mean, I think we're just going to keep going at it. I mean, the, the, the chair of education on the Senate side is the one who uh, authored the bill last time. It was what v is SSAC? WVSSAC is the Secondary Schools Against Children. Um, <laughs> um, I bet that's not right. No. <laughs> <laughs> activities Commission. So they, okay. they control um, all activities outside of learning. So uh, football, basketball, robotics, anything that you do is an extracurricular activity. Yeah. They govern, control, and uh, abuse, in my opinion. Um, they That bill will come back. Um, it was will, passed, but the governor vetoed it. It was passed, it. and the governor vetoed it. Um, but and, the, he, and the bill was going to make them at least report to the legislature. Just, re just report their rules to the legislature. So uh, it was. It was. In base, I thought the big thing was was naming them a government entity, um, which gave the, gave us oversight. Uh, some of their rules are very random, and they they have nobody to hold them accountable. So um, that bill will come back, and you know the governor's got another year. That's it, and he's vetoed bills before. And that have come back the very next year and have passed, and it's going to be tough for so, him to veto. I mean, you could it, easily, as the legislature, run that day one, get it through, and then it's he could veto it's it. It's already in the works, and it, and it passed overwhelmingly in the Senate. I think it passed overwhelmingly in the House. Um, it could definitely come back. It might have a couple of things attached to it that might be too good for the governor to veto. But you can override it if you do it timely. We can sure, surely override you got it. The yeah. votes I, there I don't, for that. I don't think it was. In, in our best interest to override it, this time we'd already left, he'd waited. So if we pass that bill really early, um, it'd be really easy to override if, if, if we wanted to. Did the governor give a reason for vetoing it? Well, he's very close to WSSAC. He's a, he's a coach. He's, uh, he's always been uh, a big fan of them, so he's got along well with them. He's down in that area, I and mean, it's kind of his thing. I mean, so... He just said he didn't have an appetite for it, from what I from what I saw. But I think it's going to come back. I think it's going to pass over long enough too. Is there an appetite for another raise for state employees this year? And for, you couch that as all state employees or school related to state employees? I don't know about all state employees. That's uh, that's up to leadership. That's them. I know on our education committee, we will be probably running another bill to to have a teacher raise based on the average of our surrounding states so uh, that could be a significant increase in it is area. and, and we, we ran that bill last year I was proud to be a co-sponsor Joe Ellington is the one who wrote it it was very fair um, it was basically took the average of our surrounding states and that was the raises given to teach. I think that there's going to be more of an appetite and I am working diligently right now on redoing the school aid formula from the beginning well, is there any way to put in like a, a process where the teachers get a an automatic raise that's tied to inflation or cost of living well they do something they every year they already do get the step okay. raise. so so that's already in there um the step raise is about 500 bucks it you know it's still 500 bucks though every single year um i'm not saying yeah. whether that's great yeah. or, or 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 horrible and, I'm just and, stating the fact. and teachers have the opportunity or educators have the opportunity to to go take classes to get higher education they get automatic raises for that so i'm not saying they're paid enough I, I i agree we need to address it but at the same time you've got you've got to find the money first um so um we will through education we'll be addressing school resource officers this year and the school school aid formula i'll definitely be doing something with the school aid formula to make it a little more 2020 not 1980 because i think we're, we're in a different place with teaching um now and we don't necessarily need based on that school aid formula what they're given we need other areas taken care of we need a lot more counselors we need a lot more uh, aids that kind of thing so you throw out a line you want to redo the school aid formula from the start i yeah. believe what does that mean so the school aid formula is um outdated it's based on it's based on school student population now um, school aid what a student gets by way of aid or is how this much money goes to the um 
Board of Education, if you will, or how much money goes to the county. Okay. So, um, and what they can use it for. Uh, I think there should be a lot more stipulations. In, in, in there, there is a lot of freedom, but I think uh, there needs to be a lot more um, freedom to do what they want with some of that money. And I think we should include school resource officers in that school aid formula um, and involved. What are the limitations on it now? Well, it's very complicated, John. I, it, it's probably a couple of hundred pages. Oh, so <laughs> it's not something we can we can talk about. It, it just needs to be addressed and looked over line by line by line. Um, and, and when I say that, what we do is we have our lawyers in, in our committee start looking at these, and, and they've got suggestions from other states, ways other states do them. So we start looking at the, the states that are really – uh, doing well, and we start emulating, copying what they do. So, um, if, if we can improve that, I think it'll go a long way for the small counties as well as the big counties. Do you know, Mike, if there are any new charter schools coming online this year? I haven't. Uh, I know the virtual charter school is is doing well. I know we got funding for the the one in Jefferson County. I don't think I, there was rumors about a Shepherd Aviation program, but but based on what I've seen with Shepherd, kind of closing the Martin's Egg Center, things like that. I don't see that happening anytime really soon. Um, so, it, you know, I haven't heard any specifics on a, on a new charter school coming on board. Thank you, sir. Final minute coming up. Thank you. Don't go away. Mm -hmm.